On this channel, sometimes we lose ant colonies. Death is a sad reality of life and the hobby. But sometimes, we get lucky, and one of our lost ant kingdoms comes back to life. I have some great news, AC family. One of our ant colonies is back, having returned from the dead. And this time, I have a plan to make sure they stay with us forever. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. An Asian bullet ant worker emerges from the nest to smell the morning air like she does every morning. But this morning was a little bit different. They had woken up to their new home with us. A few of her sisters also seemed pretty curious at the new world beyond their nest. And what a world it is. AC family, you will get to see what we created for this new colony of Asian bullet ants in a bit. But first, there's a commotion at the foot of the ant hill. One of the colony's early risers had found a huge piece of superworm. All right. She moves down to help her out. Together, they lug the massive superworm up the great anthill cliff. But being intelligent ants, one of the ants decided to scope out the best route up the hill in advance. Oops, looks like this hill isn't as sturdy as they thought. After all, they had just built this anthill fortress overnight, and the grains of dirt still needed time to set. I can't even begin to describe just how happy I am that we have these incredible ants back again. And I'm sure all of you longtime AC family here are feeling the nostalgia too. But if you're new to the channel, these are Asian bullet ants, Diacama rugosum. And you'll get to see just how awesome they are in this episode, as well as some pretty amazing things I managed to catch on camera. But to fill you newcomers in, earlier this year, our star colony of Asian bullet ants we called the Black Panthers, had sadly died out due to natural causes, which I will get into in a sec. But I'm pleased to say, I managed to obtain another colony of these incredible beasts. And this time, I've come up with an interesting way that theoretically should ensure history doesn't repeat itself. A plan to ensure this Asian bullet ant colony lives forever. Okay, so in order to better understand things, you guys gotta take a look at how unique Asian bullet ants are. These ants live a curious life. They belong to a few of about 1% of ants that run on what's called a gamma gate system. And this is how it works. In typical ant colonies, a single queen who was born a queen with wings mates with males who also have wings during what's called a nuptial flight, which happens about once a year during their breeding season. After mating, she would then lay out a ton of eggs, which turn out to become worker ants, which care for her and the colony, as she continues to lay more and more eggs for up to 30 years. But the moment the queen dies, the colony inevitably dies out too, because each worker only lives a few months, and once the queen the main egg layer is gone. There's no other ant that can lay eggs to continue the next generation of workers. They can't invent a new egg laying queen. But these Asian bullet ants, however, don't follow this life cycle system. Get this, they run on a gamma gate system, which is 100% queenless. Yes, every single member of the Asian bullet ant colony are worker ants. And one of these worker ants, the most dominant one, takes on the role of egg layer in the colony. This special worker is called a gamma gate. She looks totally identical to the other workers. But the only thing is, only she is allowed to mate with males and lay all the eggs. I've tried to locate gamma gates in the past, but it's really hard. I try to look for a swollen gaster or ant butt, but I've never found her. But anyways, the advantage of this gamma gate or queenless system is that once this gamma gate dies, 
a new camera game, the most dominant one, will take on this much coveted position. I made an episode about the unique and amazing life of Asian bullet ants and their camera gate system when I first introduced them to the channel, which you might want to check out after watching this video. But now, as per how I believe our former Black Panthers died out suddenly earlier this year, going from super well to disappearing into extinction, my suspicion is that the Gamma Gate had died, and a new Gamma Gate had assumed her throne. But the only thing she needed was an unrelated male ant to mate with. There were male ants present in the colony, but they were all her brothers. So I suppose they weren't for Game of Thrones style inbreeding. I feel in Asian bullet ant society, much like a pride of lions, males leave their birth colony and wander off to seek out an unrelated colony with a gamergate in need of mating. And that's how new gamergates become official egg layers. And once this gamergate dies, the life cycle continues over and over again. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention that these unfertilized gamergates, awaiting for males to mate with them, can still lay eggs. But these unfertilized eggs grow up to be males only. Weird, I know. Ant genetics. Gamergates absolutely need to mate with a male ant in order to produce female workers. Alright, so now that you understand the life cycle of Asian bullet ants, AC family, I have to share with you an epic plan to make sure that these ants continually keep perpetuating. We're lucky to have a second chance at keeping Asian bullet ants. And this time, I'm determined to keep them alive and going on forever. AC Family, presenting to you, The Black Panthers 2.0. Two containers, you ask? Yes, you're right. What we have here are not one, but two Asian bullet ant colonies, collected from two different areas, so we know for sure they're unrelated. Let's call them Colony A and Colony B for now. But if you have better name suggestions for these two camps, let me know in the comments. As for the basic premise of my plans, we could essentially attempt something similar to cross-pollination. Theoretically speaking, we could technically take males from one colony and allow them to travel to the other colony to mate with any Gamergate needing fertilization, and vice versa. Both colonies could technically keep each other going, hopefully forever. But AC family, in order for all of this to work, I needed to create the perfect setup for this biological engineering execution. It's time to create some new ant worlds. To begin, I will need these materials. AC family, it's time to take us back to classic ant keeping. And after all the complex vivariums we made this year, it's very refreshing for us to go back to the fun basics. Don't you think? An AC Hybrid Nest 2.0. This in particular is the Formica version, but any version would have worked. This AC and tower large. These two AC outworlds. These tubing to connect them. Cocoa fiber, plants, and the nucleus. Now, if you're new to these hybrid nests, they come with a cover to allow the ants to remain in the dark when you're not watching them. It also has pre-made chambers and tunnels for the ants to inhabit and use as desired. The bottom has micro holes at one section to allow for hydration of the nest. You can put cotton in this hydration tub here or any type of hydration medium you want. Lately, I find cocoa fiber works really well because it doesn't mold and it's water absorbent. This amount is sufficient. And on goes the nest like so. My hope is they'll discover the darkness and moisture of the hybrid nest and decide to move the colony in here to be their new nest. By the way, shameless plug, these hybrid nests are available at 20% off on my website, antscanada.com, just for the holidays. So go get yours today. It also comes with a free ant keeping handbook so you can become an ant keeping pro. Next is the Ant Tower Large. These two ports will allow the ants to be connected to other setups. But for now, 
I've got them blocked up with plugs, so the ants remain in here to nest. Like the hybrid nest, this too has a hydration tub at the bottom. This centerpiece here forces the ants to dig their tunnels and chambers near the glass. But since our Asian bullet ants are large ants, I can remove this outer layer here to give them more space to dig tunnels. All right, so now let's prepare this ant tower. Some cocoa fiber in the hydration ring. Again, you can use sand, sponge, cotton, or your preference. Then I reattached it to the ant tower. Let's proceed with these AC out worlds. They will act as the outer world of the ants. So I want to decorate them to look more natural. I used silicone caulking to glue this bottom plate on because it can actually come off in case you want to stack multiple outworlds. The cover has a double inner lip where you can put a barrier to keep the ants inside. And if you need to access the nest, you can easily remove this cover. Also, there's a feeding chute here. For now, I will apply baby powder as my barrier. The same goes for the other one. Now, before we start decorating, Let's bring in the Nucleus, the creational furnace which houses epic populations of soil biota and microorganisms, as well as our manufacturing facility of awesome fertilizer. I got some of the earth and mixed it in with cocoa fiber. Now we've seeded a good soil creature population and blended in our fertilizer for the plants. I put in a thin layer of the mix into the outworlds and ant tower. Oh. Hey, look at me touching these worms. It only proves that you can overcome any phobia with time and patience. There, perfect. Now these plants are ready to be planted. And after two hours of work, this is what the Black Panther's new epic setup looked like. AC family, behold. The new double kingdom of our Black Panthers 2.0. Let me show you around. The lands were an entanglement of vines, ground plants, and stones. Both outworlds needed to be simply decorated with low soil level, so that the ants wouldn't end up moving into these soils. We want them to move into the formicaria, the ant tower was ready and set for the bullet ants to inhabit it. I used a stick to start a burrow in the ant tower. Let's cross our fingers and hope the ants find it. Right now, these two setups, which will become the homes for colonies A and B, are not attached. But I'll get into how I will attach them later. You see, I can't allow the two colonies to mix as they'd go to war. But I had a super cool way to make sure only males could move to the other colony's nest. That's coming up in just a moment. But for now, it's time to move the ants into these new homes we created for them. You guys will truly love this. It was just so cool. Here we go. Putting on my gloves. These ants aren't called bullet ants for nothing. They have a painful sting, and I'm not about getting bit tonight. Let's begin with Colony A. Ready? And into the ant tower they go. And there you go. The ants immediately surveyed the lands and began seeking a space for shelter. Some ants were tasked at carrying the brood. And great news! They immediately found the starting burrow I created for them and began digging into the ant tower. Meanwhile, the outworld attached to the hybrid nest was ready to welcome Colony B. There! A swarm of ants immediately roamed around their new territory. They climbed the vines and plants of their new home. And in no time, some courageous ants traveled the two and discovered the hybrid nest. Yay! It wasn't long before the ants decided that, yup, the hybrid nest would be their new home. And check out how cool the ants looked up close. Whoa! The Asian bullet ants looked magnificent this close, and huge! Checking on Colony A in the ant tower, the colony had decided to start moving in the brood into the tunnel. It was officially their new nesting chamber, which they would start expanding outward. 
It was just so satisfying to see the ants were loving these new homes we made for them. One thing I noticed though, while analyzing the close-up footage of Colony B, I saw no brood, except for a couple of eggs. There were no larvae or pupae. Could this mean Colony B had newly appointed a gamma gate and she was just starting to lay? Could she have made it already? Or was she still awaiting fertilization? No worries though, because I will now show you the final addition to these setups, which will allow males from Colony A to mate with any existing fertilizing gamma gate from Colony B, and vice versa. The next day, I had given both colonies some chopped up superworm in the morning, which they took home to their colonies. Colony A had completely transformed the lands and overnight had created a vertical anthill. They piled it all up grain by grain. Let's peel off this red film and see how the ants are doing inside. Whoa! Check out the extensive tunnels! Wow, they're eating! The colony and their larvae are having a feast today. Let's have a look at them using red light. Just amazing, right guys? So cool how with the red light, we can see them, but the ants still feel like they're in the dark, seeing as they can't see red light. Now peeking into the hypernest of Colony B. Awesome! They were loving the nest. They certainly have a lot of space to expand and grow into. They were huddled in groups, munching on superworm pieces. So as for the final touch to my ultimate plan, the whole reason I chose to house these Asian bullet ants in Formicaria, as opposed to huge vivariums, is because I needed to be able to monitor them. I needed to see when each colony was producing male ants, and once the male ants did arrive, I could then go ahead to do this. Check it out. As you know, our AC outworlds are stackable. And if I stacked both outworlds, but kept the barrier on the lid of the bottom outworlds, it would be enough to keep the worker ants in the bottom outworlds, while allowing male ants who could fly up past the barriers into the upper worlds to use this tube here, which I'll attach now to form a bridge between the two upper worlds. And voila! Our bullet ant colonies could live forever. So check out the system. Colony A would produce males who will have the natural urge to find another colony. It will leave the nest and smell the pheromones released by Colony B's gamma gate. Travel up and through the bridge tube, enter Colony B's outworld, enter the hybrid nest, and mate with the gamma gate. Conversely, males from Colony B could do the same, only the opposite way. And that AC family should theoretically work for us to keep both colonies alive forever. Once Gamma Gates die and new Gamma Gates rise to power, unrelated males could come to the rescue and mate with them. In my mind, this should work, but only time will tell if it does. For now, I'll keep the colonies disconnected, just in case the pheromones stress out the opposing colonies. Again, we can't forget the colonies are technically enemies, even if they need each other to perpetuate. Hey, would Ying and Yang be cool names for our two Black Panthers? Should we keep the names Black Panthers or should we completely rename them? Also, do you guys think this setup will work? Let me know in the comments. If this does work, we can apply this setup to all ants operating with a Gamma Gate system from here on in. Perhaps even revive our Dracula ants, the Blood Legion. As always, I'm on a constant quest to provide my ants with the best life possible. In my heart, I want nothing more than all the ants under my care to be the happiest pet ants, providing them all things they need to live their best lives. I've learned that this requires close observation and study, and at times, a bit of experimentation some trial and error. I marveled at 
and was reminded of how amazing Asian bullet ants are. I sat and watched them for hours, and it was actually cool to be able to see them like this due to the visibility of the formicaria. You see, the old black panthers were housed in vivariums, and though I could peek into the Waitong cement nest they had, every time I peeked in, the ants would move the colony to darker areas of the nest, away from the glass. But here, the ants were okay with letting me watch them in plain sight. I also love seeing what the ants do underground. It was great having the Black Panthers back. I learned today that though deaths are part of the ant keeping hobby, sometimes death makes it possible for life. I'm happy that these incredible Asian bullet ants have returned to our antiverse, leaving a legacy that never dies and lives on forever. AC family, aren't you happy the Black Panthers are back? Should we rename them though? Let me know. There is still so much ahead in the Antiverse, and we've started uploading two videos a week, for the month of December anyway. You don't want to miss out on all these great and inspiring stories of nature in our ant room. So hit the subscribe button and bell icon for notifications now, so you don't miss out. And please remember to hit the like button every single time, including now. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, click here for our complete storyline playlist so you can follow all stories and colonies, as well as the various creatures we have in the Antiverse, so you can better appreciate why we love them so much. AC and our colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you'd like to watch the full construction and landscape designing of these bullet ant setups. It was a fun process, and I think those of you AC family who actually have any of our AC ant farms or need ideas on how to landscape your ant farms at home would truly find it helpful. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what is your favorite thing about the new Hacienda del Dorado design? Congratulations to Jack Hay, who answered, I love the water marsh part and how the crabs can get in and out of the water as they please, living symbiotically with the ants. Congratulations, Jack Hay, you just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, why would it be a bad idea to mix our two bullet ant colonies together? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday and Wednesday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love Forever!